going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Valve Files Ask Nick edition. I'm your host, Nick. Joined by the household, we have the, I was about to say old reliable. I mean, you're, oh, no. <laughs> you're not old. I'm like a piece of clothing you <laughs> don't want to wear. <laughs> I'm like a pilly sweater. Is that what you think about when you hear old reliable? Yeah, because it's not like fun and exciting. Fun and exciting, Allie, is temporary and um unreliable hmm. yeah I mean, and you're you you are fun and exciting but anyways Allie's with us the og uh household member we have another great ass nick episode for you thank you guys for tuning in and also i want to say hi and welcome to many any new listeners of ass nick uh people maybe who've tuned in for the gypsy rose episode or the clayton eckhart episode it was certainly a jam-packed week uh, so welcome. We are excited to uh, share this episode with you and have you listen to some of our caller inners, as we like to call them, sharing their stories, being vulnerable. This show is really about that, just you know, people being willing to share their stories, their problems, challenges they're experiencing in all forms of relationships, mostly romantic, often parental or siblings or friends, whatever it is. And we have all learned through our own mistakes. We've messed up a lot, and that's what this show is all about. Uh, we offer advice through the lens of mistakes that we've made. Certainly, I have made plenty, and we have tried to pass that knowledge on to our listeners and to our callers and uh, try to have some fun along the way. So that's what this show is all about. We appreciate you tuning in. We do have a writer in her. Is there anything we want to get to before? Anything we want to discuss? Do you have any life updates? Any baby updates? Any wedding updates? <sighs> wedding baby updates. They are around the corner. Yeah, it's uh, everything's getting close, you know? Baby before wedding, you know, mm -hmm. breaking news. Uh, we're having the baby before we get married. Um, everything's going really great. Oh, that, that does remind me I have a bunch of shit to do. I got some bills to pay, some people to call for the wedding. Because I'm very into like party planning and wedding planning. Is there one part of the process that maybe either as like a straight man or a guy who's never gotten married before that like surprised you of either like how long it took or how much it costs or just like, oh, I never even thought about that. Well, thankfully... Uh, as a straight man, I am lucky enough to be surrounded by uh, a lot of wonderful women. We have an audience of women, and we talk a lot about a lot of topics. Fortunately for me, not as uh, in the blind, I think maybe as some other straight men. So yeah, nothing really totally surprised me. The wedding industry itself, it's, um, it feels a little shady, if I'm being honest with me. It's a lot of car salesman type of... What's that look you gave me? If I'm being honest with me. <laughs> not being... with... Not with you, but with me. <laughs> if I'd be honest with myself. <laughs> I didn't even realize I said that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's like a hustle. Clearly, like, there's not a lot of set prices, right? And so yeah. it's like, are you trying to fuck us over or are you not? Like, it's a lot. It feels very car sales me. Yeah. Yeah. When I was working in Chicago, I started our wedding planning division. And something I would do when I would reach out to a lot of these venues or hotels that we already had relationships with. So I was like, hopefully they wouldn't want to swindle me, but I feel like half the time they still do. I would purposely say like, oh, it's an, an event I'm planning for a client. Or it's like, I would not use the word wedding just to see what price they would give me. Yeah. No, there's definitely surcharges that you have to deal with. And I don't know. I, I, I'm more in tune to, like, I know when I'm being hustled, you know, having a degree in or a background in sales or dealing with people in Hollywood, you know, like you, you get a pretty good education on, on bullshit. So I think that was, I don't want to call it surprising, but annoying for sure. Especially cause you're always talking to people who always say like, you know, this is your day and we're just here to make your day the most special day of all time. And you're like, Oh great. That's amazing. Meanwhile, you're just like, I think you're fucking me. Uh, you know, there's a lot of those. Fucking with you? Fucking with me. Or fucking me. Fucking me over. I don't know. I didn't say literally. Uh, if I'm being honest with myself, I think you're fucking me. <laughs> well, you know, clip that. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of that. But I honestly, overall, a pretty solid, seamless, painless experience. Natalie has done a lot of it uh, in terms of the planning. And I've just tried to be a helpful resource where I could be. Have you done any sort of tasting? Because I feel like you're very food particular. Uh, we have. We did that over Thanksgiving. And we're happy with the result. I have never gone to a wedding and really remembered the food. The food just has to be fine. Because I have gone to weddings where 
they have served some high quality food. But like, again, you're serving in mass portions. It never comes out like, you know, if someone was just making it for you type of thing. And so, yeah, my goal is to have our guests not be hungry. That's the goal when it comes to food. And we're doing some cool things with the food and in whatever. And I'm happy with the food. But like, you know, I've never been to a wedding where people are like, oh, my God, you know what the best part was? The food. You know, you just don't want people. You, you Honestly, if people are remembering your food, you did something wrong. Either probably the food's terrible or people were like left super hungry. Right. The goal, I think, for a wedding is to just make sure your guests are fed so they can enjoy you in the other festivities of the wedding. Right. That's kind of what I think. And I think we have some really like enjoyable foods. Mm. I just remember for my sister's wedding, I was so nervous that I couldn't eat. So the only thing that I could like keep down was the little chooter of butternut squash soup. So I just took that like a shot and I was like, well, I hope that absorbs the alcohol today. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you know, you're a different breed, though. You know, you have, you know, it was your sister's wedding and stakes were high for you. I had uh, to sing. I had to give a speech. Yeah. So hopefully our most of our guests won't be as nervous as you were at your sister's wedding. I hope that you're not that nervous. For yours. For mine. <laughs> What's he going to say? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, do we have a writer in her? We do. So this is from my good friend, Katie. I've just decided we're going to be good friends. So Katie wrote in and said the subject line was my boyfriend cheated on me with a stripper. And Katie writes, dear Nick and the household, I've been in a long distance relationship with my boyfriend for three years because he's in the military. And he just told me yesterday when we were together that he cheated on me a year ago. He said that he was hanging out with his friends the night before his best friend's wedding and went to a strip club. A stripper gave him her number. He texted her. She came to the Airbnb and then they had sex. During this conversation, I asked him whether he had ever messaged other girls before. He told me that he had three different times. He mentioned that two were people he knew and one was a girl he just met at a bar. He told me that they texted back and forth and that he was just getting to know them by asking standard questions. But then he would feel really gross after a day or two and he would block them. He said the last time he did this was last March. He was extremely remorseful and told me that he took so long to tell me because he thought that I would end the relationship and he was really scared. The lying hurts even more than the cheating. I feel like he's such a people pleaser that he has a really hard time telling the truth if it is going to hurt someone and it makes it hard to trust him. I feel pretty numb about the whole situation. I was so blindsided and I can honestly say that there were zero warning signs. I felt like he was crazy about me and he would never do anything like this. He has such a sweet personality that I don't think anyone would expect this from him. It's hard to know what to do or how to feel. I love him with all of my heart, and it really sucks that this happened because so much of me wants to just pretend it didn't. But having been cheated on in the past by a different partner, I know that pretending it didn't happen doesn't work. Ultimately, I want to know what the best path forward is. He told me he was signing up for therapy immediately because he didn't want to lose me, and he understands he has a lot of self-discovery to do. I told him that I'm taking a step back, and I need to see that he is really engaged in therapy and will figure out why he cheated and how he was capable of lying to me for so long. I don't know if it is stupid of me for even giving him a chance, and I don't know how to act in the meantime toward him because deep down, I really love him. How should I move forward? Should I break up with him? Should I stay with him but be emotionally removed while he's working in therapy? But if Nick could address this on the pod, I would really appreciate. Well, tough situation for sure. Let's just go through like good news, bad news, right? Like bad news is he cheated on you. That sucks, you know, and you would be more than understandable if you decided you could no longer be with this person, that too much damage was done. Good news is he did tell you there's that as someone who knows what it's like to be lied to regarding infidelity. It's one of those like, listen, yeah, when you're like, I can't believe you lied to me. And yes, he is capable of holding on to a really bad lie. So what she is probably doing my guess, because that's what I would have done or what I did, is you go back and then you replay all the conversations you had where even lying by admission was them lying, you know? Any moment you guys shared of intimacy or connection is going to feel false to, on some degree because of the lie that they were holding from you. So that 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 is like an obvious feeling. And then what, what we didn't want to do is just like, well, how could they do that? They must be monsters, you know, as if like, we could never hold on to a lie. I just listen. I, I think when we're in very difficult situations, like obviously how we talk a lot about this on the show, how we handle ourselves in difficult situations certainly matters greatly, especially when it comes to your character. Doesn't mean we always pass that test. And so he really fucked up. But you do have 
the fact that he told you going for you. You do have the fact that, you know, he is in therapy. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to change. And right now that could just be like something he's saying because he thinks that you're going to respond positive to it. But we also are a show that very much believes that people can learn from their mistakes. And this is clearly a mistake. You know, we recently had the pleasure of interviewing Gypsy Rose. She made, obviously, a huge mistake. You know, she was a part of a murder. You know, certainly an, uh, an accomplice to a murder. You know, who knows what's, what life is going to bring Gypsy Rose, but it, she did come across, as we discussed, you know, on last episode of Going Deeper, she really came across to me as someone who's really invested in therapy. You know, someone who had a lot of trauma, obviously from her past and her childhood, that was very s- destructive. And she's seemed to make the most of her time in prison and therapy. And she seems to me like someone who really has a chance of, reinventing herself, changing her life for the better. That is rare. Not most people don't do that, right? I say that knowing that despite your partner telling you and despite him in therapy, if you choose to be with him, as I always say, like, listen, if you're going to take a risk, be honest with the risk that you're taking. There is no right or wrong decision here. But it is a risk to try to stay in this relationship and work with your boyfriend on saving the relationship. So accept that risk if you're going to take it. But it doesn't mean it's impossible. And so far, how he is handling this is a step in the right direction. She asked, you know, should I disconnect myself from him while he's working on himself? That's breaking up. If you want to break up with him, break up with him. If, if you have, say, hey, listen, right now I am too hurt. I, am, I, 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 I don't know if I can trust you. And you're right. You have some work to do on yourself. And uh, I, I just can't be with you right now. I just know that I don't feel safe around you. I don't feel connected with you. And right now, I just can't be in a committed relationship. I just can't. And I I don't, as far as the future, I don't know. I wouldn't make any promises about like the what we'll see in the future. Don't do that. Don't do this kind of soft breakup or take a break. That will be your default. That's what she's going to want to do. She's going to want to have a cake or eat it too, which is to quote unquote break up with him, but can I keep him committed to her? So like almost like a penance. All right, well, I, we're not going to be together. We're going to take a break because you hurt me. I'm going to back off. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to do my thing. You're going to get into therapy, but you know, we're kind of technically still together. So you really can't do anything with anyone else. You can't, you don't, you can't do that. That's kind of, you're going to get into a very toxic situation or relationship with him. And you're going to want to do that because you feel very powerless now. And that, that'll be a way of like taking your power back because you'll be in all this control. You'll be able to you know, oh, you know, make him feel bad, but you'll, you'll want to do that, but you shouldn't do that. If you don't want to be with him, if you want to disconnect with him, you have the right to do that, but that means that that means you break up with him. And then you say, Hey, listen, I'm proud of you for getting into therapy, but I I just can't be with you. And I really hope that you, you know, focus on this. And like, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Maybe you can say that. I wouldn't even say that, but I would break up and, you know, see how he handles his situation. See if he stays in therapy. See if he's really committed to working on himself. And then, you know, you can check back in with him down the road. But real change takes time. Or if you want to stay with him while he's going through therapy and also maybe enter into couples therapy, that's also an option too. And you should work on being connected and stay connected through working through this adversity, you know, and try to build that trust back. And yes, it will be hard. And you will have those moments of like, I don't know if I should be able to trust you. But if you really are committed to this relationship, if you want to make it work, you have to make it work. And that is a choice of trying to stick it out, even though you're dealing with infidelity. And again, there is no wrong answer. And you have every right to leave this relationship. My big feedback is to, if you're going to stay in it, you got to stay in it. And you got to focus on staying connected. And if you're going to choose to work through this, yeah, you're gonna, there are going to be moments and on conversations where you, it's gonna, you're going to bring it up, what he did. But you have to be very careful not to weaponize it, not to throw it in his face. You know, you maybe bring it up because you might be able to say something like, well, you know, this is triggering me. This is reminding me of this. But can we talk through it? If you choose to be in the relationship, you still have to be in the relationship and you still have to do 100% of your half. And if you want to stay in this relationship and take advantage of the fact that now you are in the driver's seat and you have this power, that's not a recipe for success in a relationship uh, to kind of hang their mistake over their head, even though it's terrible what they did. So that's, that's my big feedback is to decide one way or the other what direction you want to go. And listen, if you decide to stay with them now, you're not signing any type of contract. You know, you can break up with them in three weeks or a month. You know, you can say, I, I tried to do this, but I don't think I can do it. You know, but if, if you are in the relationship, you still have to stay in the relationship emotionally and mentally 
And yeah, those will that will be challenging, and therapy can certainly help with that. But you know, either you're in it or you're not in it. That's my big my big takeaway with this, and that can be a challenge. But uh, check out uh, there's a great uh, uh, it's on YouTube uh, a TED Talk by Esther Perel. Uh, she has a kind of a world renowned Todd talk about infidelity and some of the misnomers about it and things like that and how, why people cheat. It's, it's not a, a universal, you know, so it's not like it's a one size fits all, but, um, it is, I think, you know, very educational for everyone to watch. Uh, I would check that out. Uh, and that might give you some, some clarity because that's the thing when it comes to infidelity is like, you know, all your friends are going to have an opinion of what they think you should do. It can be cloudy. And they, you know, listen, they all have their be- your best interests in mind. They want to protect you because again, the reality is most people don't change. This is a situation you, you, you have a long term, uh, a long distance boyfriend. It can be difficult. He did check out. I would dive deeper into why he really told you now. I would, you know, ask more questions around that. You know, you have every right to the keep asking questions, but I think there is a path forward. You know, I would have to know more to give more specifics, but I think my big takeaway is you have to decide for yourself what you want to do. Ultimately, it can't be your friends' decisions or your parents' decisions. It's something you two have to decide to do. There is no wrong answer. You can leave. But if you're going to leave, you have to break up. There's no taking a break or holding on to them or keeping tabs on them or, you know, abusing the power that you not you now have because very right now he's afraid you're going to break up with him he is remorseful he knows he fucked up and now you can you can hang that over your his head if you want uh but that's not the healthy way of moving forward and i i had someone in my life who was in a similar situation like long distance long term relationship and then they reached kind of an impasse of something happened where they couldn't necessarily keep moving forward they took a quote unquote break or broke up for several months and then ended up like getting back together later down the road And people have asked them like, well, how did you make it work? Or like, how did you make this break like so effective? And they both said, because it wasn't a break, because we didn't think we're going to get back together. We broke up fully. We worked on ourselves. We went to therapy. We lived lives separately. And then we were able to like come back together, you know, six months down the line as different people and then reconnect. But I think that the key takeaway is we didn't have it in the back of our mind, like, oh, this is a backup option or we're working on this. We are done. Yeah. So that's, that's really important and very, very hard to do. And as far as building trust back, that is something you're just gonna have to figure out if you can do with him. You know, again, those moments, those defining moments, like when he needs to discover through therapy, why in those moments, why he chose the, the wrong path. Because he knows the difference between right or wrong. And in those moments of weakness, like why did he choose to explore something that he knew he would regret? And why couldn't he do that in the future? Being a people pleaser, I don't know. There's more to it, right? You know, being a people pleaser to a stripper he doesn't know, that doesn't make sense. What gets me is when she's like, he was just asking them standard questions to get to know them. But I'm like, but why? Yeah, it's just like, okay, but that's, you know, no, he was horny and he was missing your a connection with you on some level and he literally dealt with a professional who's good at turning people on and probably reached a point of oh fuck and then you know he was thinking with the wrong head so to speak i don't know if it's i don't know if it's being a people pleaser i think it's him being selfish in that moment and only considering his immediate needs and not considering yours. I wouldn't rewrite this narrative in your head that he's some sort of people pleaser because that sounds better than he was selfish and he made a very selfish choice and he needs to address why he is incapable of making selfless choices in those moments rather than what he did. But he can and people have been contrite about these decisions and really, you know, I think it's a really good sign that he finally told you. To me, that says that this is a guy who does have that conscience, so to speak, and can't, does have regret. And the fact that he really wants to make changes in his life is positive. But it's also not your responsibility to forgive him if that's not something that in your heart you want to do. All right. Well, let us know your thoughts and whether you agree or disagree. Uh, we got some great callers lined up for you. As always, we appreciate you guys listening. Don't forget to send in your questions if you have one for us. As always, everyone is anonymous. Fake name, real age, as we always say. So you do not have to worry about that. So as send in those questions at asknickatthevilefiles.com. We appreciate it, whether it's uh, mediation between you and your partner, or just a question for yourself, any type of question under the sun, we would love to hear from you. We have an incredible week lined up for you this week. We have a great week lined up for you. Some banger episodes. Get ready. It's going to be wild. I, I Have I lied yet? 
You know, have I have I steered you wrong yet? Did I lie? <laughs> Um, so we have incredible episodes for you this week so be sure to tune in as always we appreciate your guys' support we love you let's get to our callers what's your time with Nick let's ask Nick your sexy questions how's it going hi um, I'm Erica I'm 31 years old and I'm worried that my long term boyfriend isn't the one okay uh, how long have you been dating for um, just hit three years. How much are you guys talking about next steps? We are talking a lot. He's been wanting to progress a lot quicker than me, kind of. And we are both like he's 32, I'm 31, which is like very normal. And it's a very normal time. Um, But yeah, I just like, I haven't been totally sure. And I, I don't know. I just feel like the clock is. Have you always felt this way? Um, I think I started getting confused like a year in. How did you feel about him when you first, that first year? What was that first year like? So when we first met, I was like, so, I was so excited about him. Like I was like, he, he told me that I was like awestruck at first on our first dates. Um, He told you that you were awestruck about him? Yeah. On our first dates. Okay. And I was, okay. um, I was like, so excited. Like I, um, I don't know. And in the city that I, that I live in, like dating had been hard for me for a long time. And I hadn't had a boyfriend for like over three months or like six, six, like I haven't had a long-term relationship before this. So, um, yeah, it was, I, I don't know. But anyway, when I first met him, he was like, he met a lot of the things that I was looking for. Like what? I thought he was really attractive. I thought he was really cute. He was my age. He had a good job. Like, he just seemed cool. Okay. Um, And then basically, it's like when our lives kind of started to come together, I started to meet a lot of his friends and he's in tech and like kind of nerdy. Um, <laughs> okay. And like that kind of started to turn me off. And so I've had this like inner conflict of like, does it really matter? Um, or like, I have like, I've been wanting to like, make sure that my partner like fulfills these like soul needs. And like, I just think we're like, we're slightly different people. It's just like, it's slightly not there. Like it's so close, but well, what do you mean by slightly not there? I mean, you know, now and I are definitely more than slightly different people. We're different people at a a lot of ways we're also i think very compatible but there are definitely like you know we have a little bits of incompatibility you know she loves sauces i'm very picky about sauces you know Mm -hmm. you're describing what i can only say sounds like an ick when you bring up his like uh, techie background like what what is he like a software engineer or yeah he is when you met him did he come across as like a nerdy tech software engineer or or like, are you just used to dating a guy who's got a bunch of bros who are in sales and do hunting and sports and you just <laughs> kind of like that vibe that that group that, you know, reminded you of like a lot of the guys you dated in high school or college in your early 20s? Right. So I'm not into like the bro guys, but I'm more into like. Guys that are really cool, like no good music. Literally, like the last guy I dated before him was like a musician with like no life direction at all. How'd that go? Not great. And I and I know that I like don't really want that. Um, I think it, that is just like more of a dream. But it's like this music thing, like this music connection. Like just as an example, like he doesn't know artists, mm-hmm. and like I I'm like obsessed with those types of things. Um. And he like only listens to playlists. I or like, I don't know. Honestly, in a lot of ways, someone could be listening to this, and it could sound like you're describing me, and and you sound like Natalie. Oh, really? Yeah. In some ways, you know, I wasn't a software engineer, but I sold. I was in sales in a tech business. I don't know fuck about music. I'm a playlist guy. I'm. It's embarrassing. I'm a top forties guy. Like I don't know music. I just. I'm not gonna be able to riff with you about like the inner weavings of music. And not that Nellie's that like. She knows music way more than me. Nellie can. She knows every lyric to every song ever played. If she hears it once, she can know everything about it. She knows artists. She knows so much more than me. And when we t- we can't we don't get to talk about music. I mean, sure, we'll talk about like I like Taylor Swift and Harry Styles, but like. Like if she ever wants to get into the weeds, I'm not the guy she's going to talk to about it, you know? 
Yeah. I don't think music in itself is a huge passion for her. But like, you know, I'm a very, I can be very analytical, you know, and every once in a while, Natalie will indulge my analytical conversations that I want to have with her. But there are, are times where she's indulging me. She's not as passionate as I am about any one particular conversation. Like that <laughs> happens a lot with us. You know, we spend every day together and um, and things like that. I guess what I'm saying is like, yeah, there, but there's also a lot of things we're compatible about too. You dated this guy for three years. Recently, yeah. for whatever reason, it sounds like you've been very fixated on the things that annoy you about him. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, like, what are the things that, you know, he seemed cool. You thought he was cute. What do you like about your relationship? Describe the last time you f remember having fun with him. Um... I mean, like he, he really gets along with like all my friends and like, that's great. Um, we both really love like doing like outdoorsy things. Like he like has taught me how to ski, which I love. Amazing. But when was the last time you had fun with him? Literally, when was the last time you guys did something and it was like fun? For example, uh, last week I was in Vegas without Natalie prior to that uh the sunday before we had a little date night in venice and we had dinner where we got engaged and we got a couple's massage and we went to a levi jean place that sold like retro jeans and stuff like that and we did a little shopping and yeah it was fun i feel like you guys are like kind of similar people like sure. similar vibes and like he is so close but then like and I don't know how much you agree with this, but like sometimes I think friends are like a reflection of you. I agree with that less and less, especially as you get into your thirties. I mean, when you're in your high, when you're in high school, college, yeah. sure, you know, and certainly who people surround themselves with can definitely be a reflection of their character, who they are. I tend to think of that more in terms of like red flags you notice. The fact that your boyfriend has a bit of a nerdy side because of what he does for work and some of those people he works with happens to be his friends and even some of those guys are even nerdier than him and they're generally that whole group is generally not interested in anything you're into yes i don't think really says anything about your relationship or your future unless your boyfriend is someone who demands to have a lot of quality time with his friends so much so that he deprioritizes quality time with you for the sake of prioritizing time with him. Does that happen? No. Okay. Um, He's like so crazy sweet that I'll be like, I just like don't love hanging out with your friends. <laughs> and I feel You don't like have fun with his friends. That's fine. I mean, who gives a shit if you have fun with his friends? They're his yeah. friends. They're not your friends. Do you hate his friends or you just like don't have anything in common with them? I don't hate them. I just don't have anything in common with them. Okay. Yeah. It could be so much worse. Yeah. Your boyfriend could be friends, some like terrible fuck boy who does nothing yeah. but demonstrate like poor character qualities. You see him being selfish and self-centered and treating people with disrespect, especially the women he dates. And your boyfriend could be like constantly making excuses for him, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And all of a sudden you could be like, well, if you're making excuses for him, like who's making excuses? You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a lot of different friends. In high school, I was, I guess you could call, if anything, I was a bit of a jock, right? You know, I've always had a bit of an artistic, creative background. And then as I got into adulthood, I had a very eclectic group of friends. Some people were more like nerdy and into music or more of the creative, especially as I moved out to LA. I maintained relationships with a lot of my friends back home who are definitely more, you know, bro -y, you know, type of dudes and things like that. You know, Nally's met them all. I'm sure some of my friends she is more fond of than others type of thing. Yeah. But is like going out with groups of friends a big deal to you? Yeah. I don't know if it's like some kind of maybe like trigger in me, maybe like I've been trying to like uncover that a little bit. Um, but I don't, I mean, I've also had like past boyfriends where I've like loved their friends and like it feels like I'm always kind of giving him like new experiences when like he's always just hanging along to like, like I have all these fun friends and we go to all these new things that he doesn't do. He taught you how to ski. Yes. What yeah. else? He, that's the only thing he's introduced you to? He's taught me to be better with finances. <laughs> okay. Positive. <laughs> that's the only two things, skiing and a little money advice. 
I don't know. And then he's so loving to me and he's so, he's like insanely patient. He just treats me like, you know, how I've always wanted to be treated. Um, I guess like maybe I'm still like chasing that, like that new experience high that I, like I've had some boyfriends give to me. Yeah. I mean, I think you're, what you're missing is drama. No, (laughs) I think it's not the drama. It's literally just like, I just feel like I'm always the one like making all of our plans. Is that a terrible thing? Um, I can get it be frustrating at times if you were to say, hey, babe, I feel like I'm always planning. It would be nice if you plan something for us once in a while. Do you think he would do it? Yeah. And is it more about what do you want him to plan? Do you want him to take more time to plan like dates with you or just little moments of affection with you? Or do you want him to plan parties with friends? Like, what are you looking for? It's more of just like experiences like outside of my social life. What do your friends think of him? So my friends that see him like consistently, like they all really like him. And the other ones that hear me, like all my concerns are like a little more concerned, but, but they're, they like live in a different state. I mean, I'm, I, (laughs) I'm not (laughs) hearing concerns. I'm hearing preferences. I just feel like, so he wants me to move in with him too. I really think it would be, I think we could coexist like really well. And like, I think it would be a good way for us to like learn more about our relationship. And like, you're not all in though. You're not, you're not all in. I don't think you should move in yeah. together. Or at yeah. least not right now. But I'm trying to figure out what, what, what you're not satisfied with. Are you still attracted to him? Yes. You pause. Yeah. What's, what, what, you didn't <laughs> think about that. No, I mean, I am. And it's, there's just like, there, there's definitely just like random icks, you sure. know? It sounds to me that you are simply not appreciating what you have with him. Yeah. Only, yeah, there's a very good and, chance and, of that too. And if I were, this is the gut feeling on the very limited information I have after speaking to you, but let's say instead of you calling in, he called in. And he was like, I think my girlfriend is not sure if she wants to be with me. I'm not sure if my girlfriend thinks I'm her person, right? It was just his version of this story. And let's say it was essentially the same story, which is like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't have a lot in common with her friends. I know I think she wishes I liked music more. It's just not my thing. Like, she doesn't, like, she seems to put up with my friends but like i know she's not that close with them i know i could probably plan a little bit more but like and let's say like for some weird reason one of your friends called him and be like he's just the nicest fucking guy in the world he's always like toting on her and he's always respectful and like he is he clearly makes her a priority like he's not perfect but he definitely goes out of way to make her a priority you know so my advice to him would be to show you what it's like to lose you and i honestly feel like you know right now you have all this power in your relationship he wants to move in with you you're not sure you are confident about his feelings for you you aren't confident about your feelings for him so in your mind you have this leverage because you're you're not ever wondering about how he feels about you and so if that were to ever change, if you woke up tomorrow and felt an energy shift of some kind where he became more distant, wasn't acting like himself, you got the vibe that you turned him off, that he was questioning whether he still wanted to move with you, I get the sense that you would panic and lose your mind. And, and if he really was serious and like kind of ghosted you or even said something like, hey, Erica, like... I love you, but I think we just need to take a break. I don't know. I'm going through like a weird time. And honestly, I don't feel like I'm getting your support. And honestly, I'm tired of you like hating on my friends. And I, I'm just kind of like sick of feeling less than. And I just need a break right now. I don't know. I think maybe I just need to see what else is out there. I think you would lose your shit. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not, you haven't said anything other than the fact that you're like kind of a little bored. Your boyfriend's not as exciting as some of the other toxic men you've dated in the past. You have responded to men in the past who gave you less than you always wanted, 
made you feel confused and you allowed your ego to get excited about the opportunity and the possibility to prove these guys wrong, that you were enough. And it was an opportunity for your ego to feel special, but it was like a fix. It was a high, it was a rush. You got, you got something out of it. Like, you know, anytime you, you know, this, your ex-boyfriend your musician guy, I'm sure, uh, well, I'm, tell me if I'm wrong. I'm literally just guessing, but I'm guessing there was a lot of moments where you were frustrated with your partner in the past, or you would talk to your girls and why does he do this? And he never does this. And yeah. And instead of standing up for yourself and saying, I don't deserve to be treated that way, you use that as an opportunity to get validated. It was like, well, I'm going to show him why he needs to treat me better. And then instead of like showing him by removing yourself, you chased him. You, you know, you let me know if I'm yeah. wrong. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm literally also, guessing. At, at the beginning, my boyfriend was like, kind of noncommittal. Like he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to get serious. And then I eventually because I was getting older, I was like, you know what? I don't even freaking care if you don't like me, then let's not date. And then he like, res he respected that yeah. because and, I, and you started the story by saying my boyfriend on the first day told me that I was in awe. Your boyfriend came on your first date with some swag, some confidence, and you ate that up. You loved it. You love that <laughs> you were on a date with a guy who kind of slow key suggested that he was doing you a favor by hanging out with you. And you loved that. You loved that. And honestly, I have no problem with that. I say all the time, universally, people are attracted to confidence. And your boyfriend was demonstrating confidence in a way that you responded to. But you have to like, you know, when this episode comes out, I'm curious what you think when you listen to yourself talk, because like, you're just like, I don't know. It's just like, I'm kind of bored. You sound bored. Yeah. And, and the thing that I struggle with is like, I know how shitty it sounds and I grapple with just like doing the right thing. I don't want to take him for granted. And like, you know, like I just want to like feel it in my heart. So I feel like there's like things that I have to untangle. He is like endlessly like patient and loving to me. But which he, is you like, almost say it like you're annoyed. <laughs> really? Well, you're certainly not grateful. I mean, I don't know how much you listen to this show, hmm. but usually we get calls uh, with like husbands who don't want to spend any time with their wives, you know, no, and totally. you are allowed to yeah. lose interest in your partner. You were allowed to no longer find him attractive. You are allowed to have your feelings change, but you're not even saying that you're just kind of like, I'm bored. And like, he doesn't do anything that exciting. It's just like, you're kind of saying, I want my boyfriend to be just a little more toxic than he is. I want him to piss me off. I want to fight for our relationship. I want to like mix it up. Yeah. Anyway, the whole like liking it, not liking his friends part to me, I, I don't, I don't necessarily understand that because again, you know, you're 30, you're, you're in your early thirties. He's in his early thirties. Like, I don't think you should pick your partner based off their friend group. Yeah. Like you're not in college anymore. I know. Yeah. And I really hope that I, it's not like that I'm attracted to toxic people. Like I feel like I have been Listen, trying to work that. We've all been there. Every once in if Nally was here, she would joke around with you that every once in a while we joke sometimes, like jokingly, where we'll like we'll talk. I'm glad we don't record it because we say some crazy shit to each other. And she'll like mouth off and she'll like shut up, you stupid motherfucker, or something like that. I know she's joking, but every once in a while she admits that her little toxic side of her will come out to just introduce a little drama in our relationship. Because you know, thankfully, most days there isn't. That's not to say we haven't had our problems or we haven't had some shit we've had to work through and stuff like that. But, you know, most days, I like to think we have a pretty healthy relationship. We over communicate, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's natural for to get complacent and bored and and miss the days where, you know, you argued with your partner for 45 to 90 minutes. You felt exhausted. But the comeback, the getting back in their good graces was such a fucking euphoric feeling that like it was, it was a fucking high, mm -hmm. you know, but you're getting older and you're hopefully maturing and you just have to find new ways with your partner to mix it up, you know, and maybe it is taking adventures together, traveling together, you know, it, you have every right to say, Hey, listen, I think we've gotten a little too set in our ways. You know, I, got, I think we've gotten a little too comfortable. Let's do something exciting. Let's be adventurous. I don't know. Maybe it is you take a trip that you don't all plan for all that much. I don't fucking know how you want to mix it up. There are ways to mix it up mm -hmm. in your relationship without trying to uh, sabotage it, I guess is what I'm saying. And listen, if you're, if you're like, I just don't love him anymore, then fine. I'm not trying to convince you to be with this guy. Mm -hmm. But all I've heard from you is this like, 
I don't really know. He's super nice. There's some things we don't have in common. Like, you know, you don't think your boyfriend's cool. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think Natalie thinks I'm cool, to be honest with you. No. I think she thinks I'm far, far less cooler than when she first met me. I wish she was here. I'll ask her tonight. You know, she's seen behind the curtain a little bit. I am like, I have a nerdy side. I am a dork. I can be insecure. I do have icks and disgusting habits. You know, she lives with me. We've really gotten to know each other. We see each other differently. You know, that is part of a relationship. Yeah, I know. Do you enjoy having sex with them? That can be good. That can be good. I'm struggling here, you know? Like, okay, so the (laughs) the sex can be good. You're still attracted to him. He seems to be taking care of himself. Like, what is the problem? I think the the first guy that I loved um, was super into music, had all these cool friends, and it didn't work out, and it, like, crushed me. So I feel like that is, like still lingering and it was from so long ago so it's kind of like erica you need to let this go um but i like that could be a part of it um go give your boyfriend a hall pass and see how you feel i don't know i'm kidding but think about that i don't know imagine what it'd be like to see him going out on date do you uh, how like do you think if you broke up with him how do you think he would do on his own i mean i think about seeing him like around the city or something and it like just makes me feel very weird Okay. Well, it just makes me feel very un. Does, I don't know. It's does just he like have any? To, does he have any idea about how you feel? He does. We've talked about it. And and what, what he's do you say just to him? Patient. What do you say to him? <laughs> I've told him what I've told you. He's been like, "Well, what?" And I've said, "Like, I just don't get along with your friends, and I feel bad about that." But who gives a I, shit? Don't let let him go hang out with his friends. Yeah. Do you always have to be there if you keep dating him? I would hate for you to say, I'm refusing to hang out with your friends, but like, you don't have to always go, you know? And when you do go, yeah. like, you don't have to like, have a lot in common with them. You can be like, hey, whatever. There are definitely plenty of people I'm friends with that Ellie is just like, cool, like, have fun. <laughs> yeah. You know? And if you decide to have a life with this, do you want to have a family? Do you want to get married? Like, what are your... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, friends will be less in the picture, you know? It's, you, you need to find, yeah. if you want to, Settle down, get married, and have kids. You need to be attracted to your partner, and physical intimacy is important. And it sounds like you have that, but like you are describing a lot of positive qualities in a partner that you seem to have with him. This is not even about necessarily just him that you two have and share. Just the simple ability to talk to him about how you're feeling and his willingness to listen. To be honest with you, if he were on here like as a mediation, I would tell him straight up with you standing there. I'd be like, I, li- I think you should be less patient. Mm-hmm. I think the more yeah. she, the more she keeps downplaying uh, your guys's connection and the more she keeps like suggesting that you're not enough for her, I would stop apologizing for not being enough. And I would start, just like living your life as if she is going to eventually leave you. Mm-hmm. you know, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. He definitely deserves not to be in a three-year relationship with someone who's constantly questioning whether he's good enough and without any direction whatsoever, without anything he can actually work on. 100%. Yeah. I don't think you should move in together. To be clear, I think that question is already answered. It's like, listen, man, like we've only been dating for three years. I know it's three years, but right now, like I, I don't think we should live together. You know, are you in therapy at all? Yeah. What do you guys talk about? Like, have you talked about this shit like this? Yep. Yeah. That's the thing that we talk about. Yeah. And what do they say? Um, I think she's trying to be a good therapist and like not not give me the advice, but she doesn't want to tell me what to do. And I just kind of like want someone to tell me what to do. What, what does she say though? She'll, she'll say stuff like, like there's some things where like, he's told me that he wouldn't move to my hometown and she, and, you know, and she's like, okay, if he said that he would move to your hometown, what would you do? Would you be okay with that? And then I'm like, I like get all my reservations again. Um, what, what does your hometown have to do with it? I just like, if I, I wanted to have a family there and he said yeah. that he wouldn't go there because of work. As of now, you're in a relationship with yeah. a guy who has told you that despite how great he is and how flexible and patient he's been, the one thing he's not open to right now is to move back to your hometown to raise a family with you. Yeah. He wants to do it in the city we're in now. How do you feel about that? It's just a lot to think about. Like, I think. Why do you have to? Also, you don't have to think about it right now. I feel like I do since I'm 31. You're not 51. You're 31. I think I am. I think the whole reason why I'm like seeking so much advice on this is because 
of like the biological clock type of thing. I hear you. But again, and I'm not a fucking doctor, and I understand and empathize that women have to deal with a biological clock that men don't. But you're 31. You know, I don't think you have to start making rash and unwise decisions for yourself and settle for a guy you don't want to settle, or I, I don't even know. But I do think this, you are adding unnecessary pressure to yourself. You're, listen, you are not ready to make a decision about moving in with him, let alone getting engaged to him. And that is totally okay. Yeah. So my advice to you would be to stop deciding internally in your head that you have to decide by the end of the year or whatever false timeline you have put in your head is like, I need to figure this out. Okay. Yeah. I think more big picture, you can say, I need to figure out why I, I question my relationship as much as I do. And I need to figure out whether am I just simply not appreciating my boyfriend or is there a bigger issue about how I feel? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get an answer out of you, but like, Usually at this point, if someone was like, you know, withholding information, I'd probably be able to get it out of them. But like when I asked you the sex question, I honestly was like, yeah, if I'm being honest, like ugh, not that great, you know? And they're like, okay, because that would have been hard for you maybe to acknowledge. But you're like, I don't know. I'd still like having sex with them. And like, you know, I'm still attracted to them. You just wish he wore leather jackets and liked music a little bit more and was like every once in a while would book tickets to some like old school rock band and 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 then be like oh this is so cool that we're going to this and like you know and it'd be some sort of like oh cool moment and then he'd introduce it to some cool people and be like what a wild weekend and then you do some drugs together and like it'd be fun like okay oh my gosh and also why can't you do this shit that you want to do not with him like your boyfriend whoever they are or your husband doesn't have to be the sole source of your entertainment mm -hmm. you have friends you get to go out with him. Do some crazy shit with him. Go to a fucking concert. I don't know. I'm just not yeah. understanding why your boyfriend has to be the person who you have to like hanging out with his friends. You have to like what he plans. You have to be entertained by the things that he's interested in. Why? I mean, to some degree, sure. I feel like what's more important is like, do you, are you guys able to have fun together? Whoever plans it. You know, do you guys enjoy each other's company? Do you feel content in your relationship? Does he motivate you at all? You know, does he mm -hmm. inspire you at all? What do you respect about your boyfriend? He's kind of been through like a lot of crazy things in his life. Uh -huh. um, so he's really resilient just in terms of like, like sickness and moving to other countries and like all these things. So he has like a lot of resilience that I think is really cool. I, well, like I uh, I think resilience is a uh, an amazing quality that is often underappreciated. I know, yeah. I think just like the reason why I'm seeking advice is, yeah, it was just because I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself because of my friends, like who've been in long term relationships, got married, have a six month old. Like I'm not there. That's okay. Um, yeah, you're not them. And you know what? I'm about to have my first kid. I'm 43 years old. Like, it's not how I planned it. I'm glad, you know, Nallie, on the flip side, is going to be a younger mother. You know, Nally's had a, a wildly entertaining life up until this point, more than, say, I had when I was her age type of thing. But at the same time, our lives will be, you know, we have, we're, we're going through life differently. And then, you know, quite honestly, that's something that in, in a relationship we're, we're, we might have to address and adjust to. Just because your friends did something doesn't mean you have to. You're going to make new friends. You'll lose some other friends. Stop pressuring yourself. What I want for your boyfriend is to stop putting up with your shit a little bit. <laughs> and I say that playfully. No, I mean, honestly, same. Like, I feel like he, like, loves me so much that I can, like, do no wrong. I'm like, this well, is not true. You should... Yeah, I wouldn't take it for granted. It's, it's, listen, it's a fine line. We were, I was talking about this with friends the other day. It's just like, oh, we were talking about the podcast or something or, like, cheating or, I don't know. But like your boyfriend is thinking she's my person or she's my girlfriend at least. And it's just my job to support her. And that's what he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, and you're being annoyed by his support. But eventually we will lose the support of our partner if we, if we continue to act ungrateful for it. I don't know when he'll reach his limit, but he does have a limit. I can promise you that. But right now it's not that he's a pushover or, you know, yeah. it's that he is 
trying to be empathetic to the fact that maybe you are just kind of going through whatever it is you're going through because it doesn't sound like a him thing. It sounds like a you thing. And it sounds like you are having a hard time replicating certain feelings and emotions that you responded to in the past. And the only way you have known how to elicit those feelings is through toxic men and other toxic behaviors. Mm -hmm. And you, I feel like, just need to find healthier outlets to get that rush of excitement and, and stop judging your relationship and judging yourself and act like there's a certain way of doing things because there just isn't, you know? Your husband is friends with coworkers. He has some similar interests in some of his coworkers. They're not his ride or dies. They, some of them might not be at your wedding if you marry him. He might not talk to any of these guys in five to 10 years if you were to get a different job. I don't fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of his friends are friends by proximity. You don't have to even enjoy hanging out with any of them, you know? And yeah. so and I, I just think it's that right now, and you've been clearly focused on the things that you don't like about him. And I would, if I were you, my advice to you is I would maybe write down uh, things and think about things that you're grateful for in his life. And I would communicate that to him. And I would try to focus on those things. Like every guy is going to give a, a nick. Like, you know, he just is. I think right now the most mature, healthiest thing you could do is to end the conversations about moving in with your boyfriend. Hey, listen. I mean, assuming you still love him and I want to be with him, but like right now I'm just not ready. And I think I've just gotten in my head about like timelines and my clock and my friends. And like, you know, I've obviously been honest with you about like my feelings in the past. And I just, I just feel like it's unnecessary, but like, and the reason I don't want to move in with you isn't because I want to go backwards. It's because I don't want to move things forward too fast. And I, and I understand we have been dating for three years, but you don't move in with someone because you've been dating for three years. You move in with someone because you're both mutually excited to take that next step together and move in with each other. That's it. Short of, you know, short of like getting married and being like, it would be weird not to live together if you were married. But that's the only yeah. reason two people should move in together. So take that pressure off yourself. Try to set expectations with him and just be honest with him where you're at. You guys should feel like you make each other a priority first and foremost, and that should be obvious. And other than that, like how you prioritize friends and quality time with them and vice versa, like that's all, like there's no right or wrong answer as long as you guys feel like you're getting what you need from each other. And what you're getting from friends and those interactions are just like not as important. I also think this is my like first long-term relationship and maybe there's just like a lot of learning that's happening there. Maybe. Try to take the pressure off yourself and say, right now, all I'm going to do is focus on enjoying our relationship and focus on our connection. And I'm not going to think about kids, marriage, or moving in with this guy for at least a year. And I would communicate that with him and just say, hey, listen, I think we've, I've lost sight of like our connection. What I want to think, focus on in our relationship in 2024 is our connection. I want to stop unappreciating the way I feel like I have. And I want to find you know, new ways for us to do exciting things. I want to work on the little things, but right now I just want to focus on that. I really don't want to think about, are we ready to move in with each other? I don't really want to think about an engagement and I want all these things with you, but like right now I just want to focus on our connection. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you should start. And then like, let's say if I'm like 32 and I still don't feel this like- Worry about 32 when you get certainty. there. Yeah, call us back. But right now stop worrying. Like your first thought after me saying that was like, well, what happens when I get to 32? Just try to be a little bit more present. You're looking for answers that you're just going to have to like wait to see. Yeah. And your relationship with this guy isn't going to work out because of fate or destiny or because you guessed right or some wizard came to you and gave you an answer that you were seeking. It's going to be because you put in the work, mm -hmm. you know, and he put in the work and you guys chose to be with each other and you chose as, as time went on, you got more comfortable with each other and you got more complacent with each other. And it was more easy to take each other for granted. You decided to not take each other for granted. You decided to do the work and you found new ways to connect and reconnect. And that's every relationship. Yeah. So right now you're disconnected from your partner. And instead of focusing on how to reconnect with your partner, you are questioning your entire relationship and comparing it to shitty relationships you had in the past. And I can see why you're spinning your wheels and you can't get answers because that would be very frustrating. So focus on your connection. And stop mm -hmm. judging yourself and stop making this decision feel impossible because you're looking for something that's not there. You're looking for clarity that doesn't exist. 
yeah, I put a lot of pressure on myself. All, all the people in my life are putting a lot of pressure on me too. Well, that's partly um, because you probably don't shut up about it with them. <laughs> so actually, <laughs> or is that wrong or no? No, that's right. Okay. <laughs> So stop talking about it with your friends. When people ask about your boyfriend, be like, things are great. And like, you know, honestly, I just think I probably just haven't been appreciating him as much as I should have. But at the more importantly, just stop talking about it. You know, and yeah. if you say anything, say positive things. Unless there's a reason, you know, not to. But right now right. you're out there like asking everyone if to make a decision for you and your relationship and you're generally just acting unhappy. And so obviously your friends who care about you, who want to see you happy are like making a bigger deal about things that just aren't there in, in your relationship. But like, it, it's all based off of your attitude. Yeah. That's something that my therapist said was like, you need to stop asking people about it. And like, you need to just work this, like work on it with just you. Yeah. Do something exciting with them. Just be like, Hey, maybe in the new year, what's something we can do. That's a more that that's what we would both consider adventurous and let's share that experience together. And then when you get in bed, I don't know, fucking role play or something. I don't know. Do some weird shit where you, you know, scare yourself a little bit. Maybe that role playing is like, you know, I don't know. But like you can mentally like, you know, I, there's other ways to elicit this type of uh, feeling that you're seeking out yeah. without sabotaging your entire relationship that you cannot for the life of you. <laughs> Seem to appreciate. Well, or, or point out anything that makes me say, I don't know, red flag, maybe, you know, and like you've heard me a couple weeks ago, some girl asked for a divorce. So like, I'm not, I, I don't, I'm not right. taking sides. I, you know, whatever, yeah. but like, I, I'm not hearing I heard that one. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> hearing anything from you that would suggest that, you know, this is something worth throwing away. I know. I think that's why I just get like so contentious. Cause I'm like, oh my God, his family is great. I really like his family. Like, <laughs> but even if they weren't, who cares? You're not marrying his family to a certain extent. I understand that people have some really shitty in-laws and that can be a problem, but Stop yeah. thinking about his friends or his family and focus about what you have with him. What do you share with him? What do you appreciate about him and vice versa? It's all that matters. Okay. And just take the pressure off. Yes. All right. Well, keep us posted. Let us know what you decide to do. Give us an update. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Well, we're still in that kind of New Year's resolution state of mind. So if you are looking to you know, cleanse out all the toxic things from 2023, Maybe you should start with an actual cleanse, like a juice cleanse from squeeze.com. That's right. If you've never done a juice cleanse, well, then, well, you're missing out. Well, first of all, you're missing out on some delicious juice flavors. I mean, fruits uh, in the form of juices and have those benefits like less bloating, weight loss, if that's something you're interested in, increased energy, better sleep, uh, breaking bad habits. Uh, those are all things that are very hard to do. And, you know, attacking things like a cleanse or some type of new regimen in your life has great ancillary benefits in addition to the direct ones like, again, better skin, better sleep, more energy, decrease the risk of diseases as well. I wasn't sure what to expect with my first juice cleanse, but I was really pleasantly surprised. The juices taste so good. You're like looking forward to your favorite juices every day. And just all the benefits that Nick mentioned, clearer skin, more energy. I just felt really good about myself. And I'm so excited to do my January cleanse. Incredible. With same day delivery or free fast delivery nationwide with code V-I-A-L-L. That's right. Use code V-I-A-L-L for same day local delivery or free fast nationwide delivery with code V-I-A-L-L. Quince. Are you looking for unique items in your closet? Are you tired of the fast fashion, right, repetitive things? Like you go to like one store and it's just like, oh, a, a blue flannel. You go to another competing department store. It's like, oh, another blue flannel to choose from. Well, if you're looking for a little bit more variety and some premier looks in your closet, you got to check out Quince. That's right. Quince has all the must haves like 100% Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweaters from $59, 100% leather jackets and fitted pants. That's just the tip of the ice of the variety of uh, like really great, wonderful pieces that Quince has. Quince has so many great parts about it, but also they are working with top factories, uh, cutting out the cost of the middleman to pass the savings on to you. We love that. Another best part about Quince, all of Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. So if you're looking to up the quality of your closet without upping what you're spending on high-end clothing pieces, well, Quince is your destination you need to check out now. Upgrade your closet with Quince. Go to Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L for free 
shipping, and 365-day returns on your order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsibly manufactured practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. We love that. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name is Anna. Hi, Anna. How old are you? 36. How can I help? Well, I really like my boyfriend, but my friends think that he's using me for my car. Okay. Why do they think that? How long have you been dating? Actually, a year from yesterday. Oh, congratulations. Well, Happy anniversary. Um, yes and no, but we've broken up. Oh, you broke up? Yes. So your ex-boyfriend? Ex-boyfriend. You're right. Did you break up with him? Well, long story short, so everything was doing great, you know, um, he met my friends. I'm actually widowed. Um, You're actually my, what? And he met my widowed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, uh, we had a good um, year with my late husband. Um, it was six years. But now I jumped into a relationship. It, the, my, the ex-boyfriend now is younger than me. All four years. But he's doing great. You know, we're doing great. Um, he met my son. So I was like, okay. Um, and then my friends. So obviously I got involved with my friends. My, my friends. And... Well, he works in the city. I have my car. And most of the time, like, he would borrow my car for some reason for work. Um, for if it's a long, um, like, he's working somewhere else. And it's fine with me, you know, like, I don't, I don't care all, you know, we're in a relationship and things like that. Then my friends got involved. They were like, mm, um, why is it that he's always using your car? Um, or like, we don't see him as you, he's treating you like a prince, the princess treatment that we want you to, you know, have in a relationship and things like that. And I was like, you know what? Um, it's not that, you know, like you guys don't see it because we don't go out date with you guys. We have our own time and, you know, like he's treating me good. Like if you borrow my car, put gas or take care of my car and things like that, like good stuff. So recently he's doing um, personal stuff. And we were having dinner at this Chinese place in our local city. And he was excited. He was like, okay, let's go eat dinner. And I was like, okay, cool. We ate dinner. So he is in the hospitality industry. And we usually like kind of like talk about like what the food's like, you know, and things like that during dinner. And I was like, I really don't like the food because I'm like, you know, it's like, what's the hype of this food, you know? And he thinks that I was rude and, you know, I finished the food. Like, there's nothing wrong. Like, like it just doesn't meet my standard. Like, but I was not like, oh, the food is not good, you know, and things like that. And then he's looking at me. He's like, um, I don't think that you're going to say that. And I was like, well, we, I said that in the car and things like that. And he's like, you don't understand, you know, like I paid for dinner. I want to have dinner with you and things like this. But I already sense that there's something off with him. So I just like, I was not being rude. First, you always want me to know like what is the food grade oh, da, 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 and things like that. And I was like, okay. So I dropped him off and that was Sunday. Monday, didn't text. So he told me, um, text me when I get home. I texted him, no response. The next morning, I didn't get morning text, whatever. Hi, baby, whatever. Nothing at all. Here comes Tuesday. Tuesday, he texted me around nine in the morning. And he's like, I hope you're doing well. And da, da, da. And I was like, okay. And I was like, good morning. How are you? And da, da, da. And he said, um, I left midship my work. And I was like, okay. I already know something's off with work-wise and stuff. But it was like brave of him, like just left the line, you know. And I was like, okay. Um, so basically in my head, like, okay, you don't have a job anymore, you know. But he has something else that he can find, you know. And then he said, I want to talk to you about dinner, the dinner that we had. And it was really bothering me and things like that. And I was like, okay. I was still at work. Talk to him. And I was like, and I was like, he calls me, FaceTime me all the time. Not a problem. Even my, my work is fine. And I was like, okay, you can talk to me. You can call me. He said, I don't think that this is a good talk when while you're at work. And I was like, hmm? So I was confused. So I was like, okay, um, I'll be in my car then and talk to me. Called me and he was expressing that, okay, I left my job and basically like break up with me. 
FaceTime and he said that I'm not 100% um, going to be a boyfriend for you right now. And all like, and your friends are right, you know, and da, da, da. And I was like, what's going on? Like, like, it's just a lot of things personally that he is dealing right now. And I, I'm not, I don't understand what's going on. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know what uh, to do. I, I don't know what's going on either. Mm-hmm. But listen, I, I think ultimately you're just trying to make sense of things where you don't like his behavior or what he is saying. And I don't think it has anything to do with you not understanding what's going on. It has to do with what you don't like what's going on. Okay. You know, if, if I were dating someone and they were to call me up and say, I can only see you two days a week. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you why. Uh, also, I, I'm going out of town to Europe for a couple of weeks next month. I can't tell you why. And then all of a sudden, then you saw them and this asked, you know, and they just were starting acting weird. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, you don't understand maybe because they're, he's not telling you, he's clearly not being upfront with you about what he's thinking Mm -hmm. or feeling. And you're trying to understand him, but I think you just need to accept him. He's clearly doing things and you're trying to constantly give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. For whatever reason. Yeah, he said that too during okay. FaceTime. And he was so like, what do you want to understand? I've been trying to understand him. Like, at, no, 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 at but everything okay. else. But he says he doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. Right, right now. He said that. He said he doesn't want to be with you right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. He said that I'm not going to, I'm not the guy. I'm not 100% boyfriend to you right now. Um, he's doing personal stuff. He wants to be somebody that he, wants to be and i've been supporting him in in any like, yeah, clearly but i'm just saying aren't you like you should probably maybe stop supporting him he says he doesn't want to be your boyfriend he says he can't be your boyfriend he said he's not capable of giving you what you want or need so why uh you know i, why I, am I, I still pushing you're like, like be disappointed be sad be frustrated mm-hmm. and those are all normal feelings but you're not accepting the reality and instead, you're using his bizarre behavior as an excuse to say, well, I just don't understand. And since you don't understand, you're giving yourself permission to not accept his actions. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I don't understand. So what I, you know what I should do? Instead of, instead of just taking his actions at face value, I'll talk to my friends, I'll call into the show. And I'll spend all my energy trying to understand him because until I understand, there's still hope. Yes. And this is the bizarre thing that happened. Like I was waiting for your advice. So after that breakup, no contact, no, no, nothing at all. And then after a week, he texted me. Okay. He texted me like, Hey, how are you? And I was like, this is weird. So I responded. I was like, it's not that I'm weird. Good. Why is How it weird? You? What was weird about it? Because I thought it was like, okay, that's the end of it. You know, like we you're, still you're follow each who, other. And in- you said not right now. Well, so maybe a week later, he mm-hmm. was just checking in. He's not interested in you dating other people and moving on from him. He is he, what he is interested in the ability to do whatever he wants when he wants and be selfish and have you wait around. But you are, you're complying. So and you're acting like all his behavior is like some puzzle that you have to figure out. You don't. You don't have to figure it out. Like, he's not the first guy who asked for some distance and a week later reached out to check in. And you're acting like it's some sort of like crazy, unexplainable behavior that you have to mm-hmm. absolutely figure out. And again, I get it. I get where you're coming from. I've been you. I've overanalyzed situations. I have refused to accept the reality of situations. So no judgment. But that is what you're doing. And it sounds like your friends have picked up on some red flags and bad behaviors about your boyfriend that you've chosen to look the other way. You know, you you've dealt with some terrible loss with the passing of your husband. And that must have been sad Mm -hmm. and tragic. And it must have been really excited, exciting to meet a new guy and have a new relationship with new beginnings and new reason to have hope. But this one didn't work out. And instead of making excuses for this guy who's four years your junior and clearly even more immature than his age is even suggest you are 
putting up with things that you shouldn't put up with and convincing yourself that you need to figure it out. There's nothing to figure out. Okay. He doesn't. And you know what's crazy? He was like, that, that, was, that was the conversation. Like, I thought I left something in his apartment and I didn't. And I was like, oh, he said, I, I'm going to give you some couple of things. And I was like, I didn't left anything in your apartment. And he said, a Tupperware. And I, in my opinion, in my, what I've known him, is this, this is his way of now I have a clear mind. I can speak to you. I can talk to you. Should I talk to him? Are you asking me? Yeah. Have you not been listening to what I've been saying? I know. I'm so torn. I don't know. You know that I'm not going to find this conversation. Like, I'm like, but I want clarification though. Like, about what? what? Like, about him. Like, like all of a sudden we were fine and then. You're dealing something about your personal you're stuff, not, and why not, would you? You're not fine right now. He is testing his limits. He is pushing okay. the boundaries. He is seeing what he can get away with. Now I'm telling you to pay attention to the red flags that your ex boyfriend is showing you, and I'm suggesting that you stop making excuses for him and act okay. like it's something you need to figure out, and so that you know you can fix the problem. He is the problem. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The best. I always listen to you. Well, this time we'll, I'll listen we'll, to you. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, cause it's, <gasps> and I appreciate you listening to the show, but you clearly haven't been listening to my advice because, you know. I, I, no, no, no. I've been listening. No. I was seeking help, you know, like, but I want, like, a clear directing it to me. Like, I, I, I want that. Like, hey, wake up, you know, like. You want him to appreciate know, I, you. I get it. He doesn't, though. And you, we don't always get to choose the people who actually see us for what we're worth. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't get to get what you want. And, you know, I don't even think you really want him that much, but you're just caught up in the chase. So I think you need to maybe let this one go. Okay. Or not. You know, it's up to you. But I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you're going to get any less frustrated with this man. Yeah. I I'm sorry. This is hard. It's okay. Is this hard? Because if it my son, if I it wasn't like involved, like for my son or your, your son's only known him for a year. Directly how, how, for how, me. How old's your son? Eight. Okay, he's eight. He'll 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 be fine. He'll forget. I know him. he'll be fine. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, you stop stop making it worse than it is. I know it sucks, but don't make yourself feel bad or make it worse or start know. you know saying, oh, he knew my son, and don't go into that whole pity party stage. I know. I would okay. if I were you, I'd get angry. Why? Because he's been wasting your time and you've put up with it and you have listened to his bullshit and you have allowed him to push your limits and not respect your boundaries. And he has, he has confused you to the point of frustration and you have invested a lot of your energy and time trying to figure out his bullshit. And if I were you, I would be mad and maybe mad, a little bit mad at yourself for not, you know, listening to what you knew deep down was right and being a little scared for doing the right thing and choosing yourself. Yeah, I would be, I would be mad. Sad. I mean, you you have your son's health. You got your health. You're a beautiful woman. You have friends. You have a lot to be thankful for. So you know, I really think anger is the energy you should channel to help get over this guy. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'll I'll try. I'll really try to be angry, but you can I already passed that already. I just I'm on like acceptance. Like it's okay. You know, like whatever. I don't think you're on um, acceptance yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can get there. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, but uh, I don't know. Well, well thank you. You, you know what Did I you think hear? you should do. What? You don't know? Not talk to him. Okay. Yeah. Move on. Nick. Yes. Move on. Okay. Say goodbye. Move on. Move on. Say, say goodbye. Yes. Goodbye. He's not your buddy. He's not your friend. He doesn't want to be in your life. I wouldn't give him access to you. I wouldn't let him have crumbs. I wouldn't let him have his cake and eat it too, I would say goodbye. And if mm -hmm. he wants to drastically change his behavior and go out of his way to show you and prove to you that he is fully committed to being the partner that you deserve, then sure, maybe you can consider it. But until then, yeah, I'd say goodbye. Okay, one last question. If he reached out and he said, I'm ready to talk to you, I'm ready to be that, you know, fully committed and things like that, should I give him a chance? I would at first ask, like, how do you, you know, how, how would you, how do you plan on doing that? I would doubt him a little bit. I would, I wouldn't just say, okay. Okay. I'll ask a lot of questions. But he's not going to do that. What he's going to do is a much lesser version. He's going to say, he's going to 
make excuses for why he's can. He'll make you feel bad for saying goodbye. And he'll make up excuses as to why he, you should allow him in his life at his convenience. That's what he'll do. Mm -hmm. And if he does any of that, you should just say no. Okay. Good luck. Thank you, Nick. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. I appreciate you. You Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Happy Viking protein and super food powder. What you put in your body matters and not all the quote unquote healthy stuff that's out there on the market is not all made equally. And that's why we are excited to partner with Happy Viking. Let's be real. Uh, whatever Venus Williams, premier superstar athlete, arguably one of the best tennis players of the entire history of the world. I want to put in my body what Venus Williams put in hers. Also, not only is Venus an incredible athlete, um, she was actually diagnosed with a career ending autoimmune disease back in 2011. So that's when she created Happy Viking Protein and Superfoods Powder to transform her health and then still went on to have one of the longest careers in tennis history. So not only are you getting protein, you're getting your superfoods. You, I mean, maybe you'll just start playing tennis like Venus Williams. We don't know. There's always a chance. (laughs) There is absolutely always a chance. Anything is possible. Happy Viking is everything you need in one plant-based shake. Protein, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, fiber, electrolytes, and more. And only two grams of sugar. We certainly love that. Happy Viking helps boost lean muscles, sustain energy, digestive health, brain power, and immune support. 93% of customers say happy Viking is the best tasting plant protein powder they've ever had. 93%. That's incredible because usually if something like that is this good for you, you think, you know what, I'm just going to deal with some crappy taste, but not with Happy Vikings. You get that delicious, smooth taste that, you know, you know, because some proteins, they got that grainy kind of doesn't mix very well. Not Happy Viking. Happy Viking protein is super foods powder. Made by tennis champion Venus Williams is hands down the best tasting plant protein powder out there. And more importantly, it's great for you. Visit drinkhappyviking.com and use code VIALL for 20% off your first purchase. That's 20% off at drinkhappyviking.com. That's drinkhappyviking.com with code VIALL for 20% off your first purchase. Caraway! Get cooking in your kitchen this new year with Caraway. It's the only thing Nellie and I cook on. We got two wonderful Caraway sets. We also got this amazing baking sheet that we make our chocolate chip cookies on, warmer pizza slices on. We do kind of everything on it. Caraway, well, like, what can I say? It is aesthetically charming, but more importantly, it is safe and easy to cook on. No PFAs, PTFEs, PFOAs, or other hard to pronounce chemicals known. Caraway products are not made with any of that crap, unlike some of those other, you know, pots and pans that are, well, they do. It sucks. You know, it's weird. Like, it's dangerous. There's, it's, it's actually a horror story. Some of the crap that the things that you might be cooking on. But not Caraway. No, over 65,000 people have rated Caraway with five stars. That's right. Now it's time for you to try it yourself. Ceramic Naturally Slick Services means minimal oil or butter for slide-off pan eggs and easy cleaning. I have a Caraway Dutch oven Ooh. that I'm so obsessed with that I make my eggs in it. Just because it's so slick. That's incredible, actually. I made pasta for Jason Tardik last night with my caraway set. And not only did he find my meal that I prepared him delicious, he complimented me on my kitchenware. Take that for what you want. Truly, I mean, we uh, I've been cooking on caraway for the past three years now. I don't see that changing anytime soon. And I love to cook. I'm cooking in my kitchen five, six times a week. So I hope that matters to you. Carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L. To get your caraway, you got to visit carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L today and take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive to our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Or just use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. Caraway Home, non-toxic cookware. Made modern. How's it going? Good. I'm Sarah. I'm 30 years old. How can we help? Um, my best friend of five years told me that he was in love with me after I just had my third baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, are you married in a relationship? No. So I had twin girls and me and my friend were still friends like we we've never like the all like the little pieces are I've never like hooked up with my friend I've never kissed him I've never anything we've always just been very normal girl boyfriends and I was in like toxic relationship I ended up getting pregnant with twins a year later I move out end the relationship with my baby daddy and I find out I'm pregnant again (laughs) so I'm like okay um, so you got pregnant with your original baby daddy and prior to you 
leaving that relationship, finally, you had already gotten pregnant. Yeah. And, all right. So the month, the month after I, I was moved out with my two girls in my own home, no boyfriend, no baby daddy, pregnant. Okay. And I went through the whole pregnancy. My friend came, uh, my guy friend came to visit me when I was 39 weeks pregnant. And prior to that visit, kind of changing the context of our conversation, like being more flirty. And it was kind of confusing. I was like, I don't really like this is new. This is different. But like, I just kind of went along with it. He is cute. Like I do find him attractive. I just never like opened up my thoughts to being in a relationship with him or anything other than that. Okay. And so some things were kind of going on. I was talking to one of my best friends and she was like, this is weird. Like, I kind of like it though. And I was like, I'm not mad about it, but I'm pregnant. Like, that's strange. Like, it's just kind of a weird thing to navigate. So he... He he admitted his feelings while you were still pregnant. Um, no, but it was starting to go from like, oh hey, oh, like I, you dude noticed, or okay, hey girl, you notice a change yeah. in his behavior while you're still pregnant. Okay. Yeah, like kind of implying like, oh, you look really like saying that I'm like att- actually attractive or things like that, and it was kind of like, thanks. Okay. But I don't know. So you kind of saw then, it coming, so to speak. Yeah, like it was kind of like a build up, and okay. then when he came to visit, I was excited because I was like, well, because he lives in Arizona and I live in um utah so he he drove and came to visit and i was kind of excited i was like well now we get to like be in person kind of see what these weird texts are kind of been doing and then <laughs> my water ended up breaking while he was in town and um it was just this really strange like overwhelming amount of like emotion i would say like i kind of wanted him to be there with me during my labor i like didn't want him to leave <laughs> and he. And it was just kind of weird. I had had kids before. It's a vulnerable time. It's, yeah. you know, like I wasn't expecting my baby daddy to be there anyways because we had been fighting. And that was kind of one of the precedents because I was having a home birth. So I didn't have to go anywhere. I'm just at home. And the baby daddy's sick anyway. But my guy friend said, well, I shouldn't be here. And I was like, yeah, right. You're like, yo, you shouldn't be here. But like in my head, I'm like, why do I want you here so bad? Like, I want you to like hold my hand while I'm giving birth. I'm like, I've never kissed you. Why would I want you to see me give birth to a baby? So it was a weird wake up call for me, feeling wise. So then I give birth and about three ish days later, he like calls me, he's like, How is everything? How do you feel? And I'm like, you know, we just kind of chat. And then he was started texting me, like, I've been in love with you since after you had your twins. I just didn't really tell you. And then you got pregnant again. And I just like didn't know what to say. But seeing you, like, I have so much respect for you. Like, you go through, like, you're doing all of these things. I'm in love with you. And I, I never let myself realize that I, what kind of love it was. Like, I always knew I cared about you, but I'm in love with you. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird because, like, oddly, like, the most bizarre thing is you, I want to tell him, like, I love you too because I've known him for so long, but loves a lot of things. So I was okay with that. I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I said the connection was like so weird. Like the, the draw to each other was so different because I've known him for six years. He used to live here. He just recently moved like two years ago. So I used to see him a lot more. So he doesn't, he doesn't live in your hometown. No, we became friends in my hometown. Um, Then he moved away. mm -hmm, Yeah. He was here for about four years of our friendship. And then the last, who he was out in Arizona. What did he, what did you say to him when he said, I'm in love with you? I said, I said, love's like a lot of things. I said, I do love you. I do care about you. And I can't really deny the fact that when you came down here, things felt way different. And I liked it. Like, I was like, I want to see where this would go. You said that to him? Yeah. Okay. And, and then, so for like, Six weeks, we talked like every day, which was not this, not what our relationship was before. We'd check in with each other when he moved away. So this was like a new thing. He talked to me like all day, every day we were texting and he just continued to say like really like emotional things like about how much he loves my daughters and like how he just wants this family life and like more kids and saying like how he like could see me as his like wife, like not even love bombing, but just like almost like a really deep 
unloading of emotion. Yeah, I mean, just because someone just kind of says, I love you after a long period of time doesn't mean it's love bombing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Love, love bombing is a man manipulation tactic when they're trying to elicit a response, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so where are we now? What And what can I help with? Because so far, I'm just hearing, yeah, it's a very unique story for sure, but you seem like you're into it. Like, after talking for six weeks, like, how do you still feel about him? Well, no, it's been four months now. He okay. told me that he thinks I'm still in love with my baby daddy. He doesn't want to do this anymore, and he's not ready for a relationship. Oh, wait. Where, and I was oh, like... Wait, where did... Oh, yeah. I was like, wait, I didn't think we were in it like a relationship. I thought we were just kind of like exploring feelings and like talking and kind of changing our relationship. So he's so kind this, of reverse course on you? Yeah, like totally flip flop. And then he's like, I can't do this. I'm not ready to be in a relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship. I said, okay. I didn't think that I didn't think you were my boyfriend. Like, that, like I, I was like, whoa, like backpedaling, like what's going on? And then we just don't talk. Like we kind of just got into a fight. He said some things that were like, kind of rude and like telling what? me that I was in love with my baby daddy. I was like, that was a really toxic relationship. And I'm proud that I got out of it. I'm not in love with him still. And did that come out of left field? Like, why do you think he said that? Like, when was the last time you brought up your baby daddy to him or have, I mean, I don't know, maybe you've seen him because of obviously your co-parenting or whatever, but uh, why do you think he said that? And do you think he had any actual reason to say that? Or was that like a get out of jail free card attempt? I think it was like a weird thing where maybe like whatever he was going on, he just kind of like something to put on me maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Um, Cause I did not Like I was pregnant. So he was, the baby daddy was coming over to help put the girls to bed sometimes. Cause I'd be sick or like just big and there's two of them, but he was only there for about an hour and we're not together for a reason. So there's always like a little bit of drama but I always had boundaries. I was going to therapy and like in like implementing these new boundaries constantly. So it was kind of weird that he said it. I think it was out of left field. I mean, my baby daddy would even make comments of like, you don't even look at me anymore. I don't understand why um, you treat me like this. So I'm like, kind of like not nice to him. And I certainly don't have an overly friendly relationship with him at all. So it was left field. Me and my guy friend do not talk for a couple of weeks. And I reach out and I just say, hey, it's almost the holidays. I don't want us to not have a friendship based off of this. Like I would like to be able to send pictures, like to be able to do things. And can we just like chalk it up to it is what it is and just kind of go back to how things were? And he was like, yes. Can I backpedal? Sure. I asked him, I said, if we don't talk, I get a new boyfriend, I do whatever. Is that going to bother you? And he said, just yes. I said, are you going to like miss the concept of talking to me? Are you going to like, is this an issue? Did you not mean anything that you said to me? He said, no, I meant everything. And I was like, what the heck? And so I guess what I want to know is he's moving to Florida now because he had to get a new job, but he's still making these like kind of like curious comments of like, I asked him about his job and he said, well, I get flights every month. I'm like, okay. Like if that, like, I don't know, like, where are you going to fly to? I don't know. And he was going to visit me on Thanksgiving, but he had to go to the new job meeting. And he's like, how's your holidays going? I said, eh, it, they're okay. Um, he's like, well, don't worry. They won't be like that forever. I can promise you that. And I'm like, what? Like, I want to tell him, can you just not hook up with people in Florida? And when you like, do you want, do you want anything from me ever? Because I don't really have the time to date anyways, but I would give him the time of day, but I'm not trying to be on a dating app. I don't know how to navigate it because honestly, our entire family, his family, my family, my best friend, everyone thinks we should be together. It's always kind of in my face. And oddly enough, even though I've never like kissed him, hooked up with him or anything like that. Wait, in the four months that you guys were trying it out or trying to make it work, you didn't even kiss? Nope. I've never kissed him in six years. I've never even like why not anything why um i don't know because we were always just he said I, he always kept me at like a certain distance because he didn't feel like he was uh like good enough for me like he wasn't ready to how have a relationship guy? with how, somebody how, serious how old is this guy uh 29 how old are you? Thir no 30 30 he just turned 30 how old are you 30 i'll be 31 in april has he ever had any like serious relationships no, he kind of tries to. And then like after a month, it's over. But he also picked very like, um, I think girls that like aren't ready for relationships either. 
Oh, so he has a pattern of pursuing unavailable women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I definitely think he does have things to work on. Like, and I told him that when we first started talking in a more, I guess, romantic way, I was like, you do have things to work on. I said, but we can like, we don't live close. We can talk through things like, see if we are compatible in that way. Uh -huh. But he always seems to like kind of run away from it, but still kind of hold me in this place where it's like, I'll be there. You're beautiful. I love your children. I want to be in your life. All right. So listen, he, he just seems just as confusing as probably all the other guys you've had in, in your life. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're calling because you want to figure out how to navigate this situation going forward. Yeah. Yes. Like, should I, be a little bit pushier in the sense of like, if you are going to say these things, can we make like a precedent? Like you're not going to, he, he says he hasn't. And I believe him. He's like, I'm not planning on hooking up with people. I don't want to hook up with anyone. I, I don't um, know. I mean, you're not, you're not in a relationship with him, so he can do whatever no. the heck he wants and you haven't even kissed yeah. him. So it would be weird for you to ask him not to hook up with other people. And also the last time it sounds like you've checked in with him was to go back, as you said, to where things were being platonic friends. There's no clear lines in terms of like, expectations, boundaries between the two of you. And I don't like the fact that like, you know, I don't think this is love bombing, but I think what he is, is maybe a little immature uh, and a little careless with his feelings for him to say, I'm in love with you. And I've been in love with you the whole time. And then four months later, say, I, I'm not ready for a relationship. I don't want a relationship. Listen, like you, you have two young twins. You have another uh, newborn baby. Like you have a lot going on. And as an immature 30 year old man, that would be a lot of responsibility for him to take on. And, you know, you still, despite you being over your baby daddy, so to speak, uh, he's still involved in your life and that can get complicated. So right now, I think, I think you need to take charge of this relationship with the, your friend, so to speak. And right now you're very passive, you know, it's, it's like, oh, you know. What do you think? You're asking him if he's okay with this or that. Uh, he's going to Florida now. I mean, it's all kind of messy. It's all, yeah. So if I were you, I would, you know, next time you speak, I would say some version of like, listen, I hope you know I, I, I care about you. And I would just kind of come clean. I would just say, listen, like, also you have to take into consideration that it was kind of in, in some ways incredibly selfish of him to express his feelings to you at the time that he did. I mean, and you know, listen, it was hard. Well, I mean, you had just had another baby. You're a single mother of three twins and a newborn baby. You have a lot going on. And then he hits you with this. I love you. And that's fine if he had his feelings, but for him to backtrack is bullshit, you know, and it's kind of fucked up. You know, and listen, like we've say things and we get scared about our feelings. And I'm, you know, get, again, I'm not accusing of being a love bomber or having malice intent or anything, but his immaturity and his carelessness still affected you. That's the thing. You know, when people like nowadays, we throw out these words like love bomber and narcissist and blah, 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 because sometimes people's words and actions will have an effect on people and it'll be hurtful. Um, and then we want to name it with like, oh, well, they're just they're narcissistic and they're a love bomber. And sometimes it's this plain old like, you know, carelessness and immaturity and selfishness. You know, it's like he's not thinking about your feelings or what this was like for you. And he's kind of immature and a little bit reckless. That has led to all of this. Doesn't make him a narcissistic love bombing monster. It just makes him a little bit of a boy, so to speak, who's gotten a little uh, ahead of himself and doesn't really know how to operate his feelings for someone who just got out of a toxic relationship, who's a, a mother of three young, very young children. And so you need to take charge. And first of all, you need to ask yourself, is this person, this friend of yours really capable of actually being in the type of relationship that you need right now? Again, you are a mother of three young kids. So what kind of man do you need in your life? You can't be wasting your time on men who are very unsure about where they're at in their life, unsure about their feelings, go from one job to another, moving from one state to another, you know, you need stability. And for whatever reason, you know, again, you just got to, you know, you're, 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 you're considering going from one toxic relationship to another, yeah. you know, I guess. Yes. And I wasn't yet. 
and again, like toxic relationship, you know, I'm sure you went in the last relationship you got into, like a toxic relationship can just become, can be caused by two people like not setting expectations, setting boundaries, following through with that, enforcing it, not giving into your own selfish needs, not thinking selfishly, like, and things like that. And this pattern that you have of, of kind of just waiting around and being passive with your relationships and allowing these men to kind of dictate the pace in which these relationships go is, is, a, is a pattern you need to break. That would. So I would love you yeah. to take charge of this relationship. And if I were you, back to like what I would do is just say, hey, listen, like I have a lot going on right now and I honestly just don't have time for to, to, go, to go back and forth with you. And this whole like stop, stop making a confusing situation more confusing. You're not going back to where you were. That's impossible. There's no such thing as a time machine. You can't pretend things didn't happen. That's called delusion. You know, to sit there and say, well, let's just pretend we didn't say I love you to each other or he didn't say I'm in love with you. Let's just pretend that never happened. Let's just pretend that for four months we didn't talk every day and try to see if we can make a relationship work only for you to say, just kidding. I don't, I'm not ready for a relationship right now. Like you can't pretend that didn't happen. So don't, don't entertain the idea of that you are capable of pretending it didn't happen. Don't be delusional. Fair. Okay. Fair. So you need to say, listen, we need to stop being delusional. We can't pretend that we didn't say this to each other. I have a lot going on right now. I need to focus on my three kids. I don't appreciate you telling me how I feel about other people. Like if you respected me, you would respect and trust that if I tell you I'm over my ex, then I'm over my ex. And whatever you need to work on and your insecurities that you have going on about this relationship, that's something you need to work on, but don't put that on me. I haven't given you any reason to think that I'm not over my ex. I'm like, listen, I have three kids with this guy. That's just the reality of the situation. So he's going to be in my life on some level. And I'm, I trust my ability to have healthy boundaries with him. And you need to trust me as well. And you need to find... I did, yeah. Okay. And when he did say that, I did actually do that. Great. And then... What did he say? He didn't like stonewall me, but he was just like, okay, sure. But I'm not ready for a relationship, so it doesn't matter. And I was like... Okay. Great. Well, then you shouldn't be talking to him. Listen, I, and I get yeah. you're in a tough spot. Like, I'm sure you being a single mother of three, it's nice to have his companionship it's nice to be able to call him and talk to him yeah because when he visited too like he was so good with my girls and he like helped me and like that's great yeah. but he's only he's it only capable good. of doing it you know for like two days yeah, yeah when he feels like it and like it's he's using you in a way yeah to feel like maybe he has Some these like things that he wants yeah because he wants a family he wants kids he wants a relationship but he's not putting in the effort to do it yeah so take him at his word. He says he's not ready for a relationship. And it's really cruel of him to pop into your life, to get to know your girls, to make you feel like you have some stability. And then for him to like a couple of days later be like, oh, just kidding. I can't do this. This is too hard for me. This is not more than I bargained for. You know, if he as a 30 year old man doesn't realize that uh, dating a single mom with three young kids is a lot of responsibility, then He's not your guy. Yeah. And don't let men use you as like a trial run for what it's like to be a dad. Yes. And then, yes. What like, and like you said, it, it, it was really hard. Postpartum is like weird as it is. But here, it's almost like I wish he didn't say it. But he did. He's got to let it go. It's hard to let it go. Like it was, it would be like if I could write down the perfect things I'd want to hear from somebody. He said those things. So I guess it's just sure, like, yeah. But like, you know, people say things all the time and they don't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. It's way easier to say things and much harder to show them. No, that is true. It's easy to say you're, you know, I care about you. I mean, think about all the women who've called on the show and all these guys who say things like, I care about you. You're like, you're the only one I'm talking to. And like, yo, and like, you're so special and you're so wonderful, but I can't have a, I can't be in a relationship right now. Yeah. Uh, I can only hang out here. I can't hang out there. Like their actions show that that's, they're not willing to make you a priority. Especially when it comes to people claiming what's a priority to them or not. You can only show through your actions what's a priority. Saying, yeah. saying what's a priority to you is fairly meaningless. Okay. Like, you show people what's a priority for you through your actions. Yeah, which is very relevant to my other situation. Sure. So, well, and I him too. Like and his priority right now, to... is this guy, your friend's priority is his job. His personal life, his your friend's priority is himself right now. Him saying, I'm in love with you on the heels of you having a baby while you're postpartum, you know, like 
is that's all he all the only person he's cared about in that moment was himself. He wanted to say it. I mean, well, again, it's a real selfish fucking move for him to say that to you and then backtrack. I'm in love with you, but I can't be in a relationship with you. Fuck off. Like, yeah, that that would be the angry side of the situation for me, for sure. Well, then, you know, and maybe get more angry. Breaking up with me. Yeah. Still in postpartum, too. Like, yeah. you know, so it, why, it, like, why are you like, why are you entertaining this guy anymore not definitely not entertaining just i guess well now it's kind of like you know like kind of got a little reality slap but um in a good way but the little comments i should just kind of like shut them down like what little comments um like don't worry your holidays aren't going to be like this forever like i'll promise you that yeah what the fuck is that that's bullshit yeah he this guy he's full of shit the scariest thing when it comes to the things that people say that they don't mean is that they mean it that he pro- he probably believes his bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy to claim you're going to do something in the future because the future's not here yet. And yeah. you might have all the intentions of being like, well, I meant it. I thought I was going to do this, but life changes. And then like, as life happens, they have a new excuse as to why they couldn't do that. You know what they'll say? Well, I didn't, I didn't expect this to happen. I meant it when I said it back then. How was I able to predict the future? Blah, blah, blah. As if they're a victim. Yeah, it's so it's so easy to make a promise about the future because you can blame the unknown on why you didn't fulfill your promise. Yeah. And everyone just kind of keeps telling me, like, he has like a plan. He's going to get his like savings like situated. And but well, that's great. And until he figures out his life, you are single. You're a free agent. You focus on being a mom. Stop wasting your time wondering when this guy is going to get his shit figured out. Yes. And listen, if he really cares about you, if he's really in love with you, the 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 more you play hard to get and the more you just give the energy like I don't have time for your immaturity and bullshit, you know, the the harder he'll chase. That won't be the hard yeah. part. The hard part will for you will be trying to figure out whether this guy actually is sincere or if he's actually ready to be in a committed relationship with you because he has proven his willingness to say things that he doesn't mean. And he has proven his willingness to say things that he is not prepared to back up with his actions. Yeah. And so like moving forward, if he does make these kind of like remarks where you're like, this is implying to us or me or whatever, just shut it down or just ignore it. Shut or it down. I just just, yeah, not, just, we only talk like maybe every couple of weeks. I wouldn't talk just, anymore. I would just be like, next time he reaches out, just be like, hey, listen, I'm not trying to be rude, but like I, you, I care about you. It really messed me up. You saying you were in love with me and then pulling back and just say, call it, name it. I was delusional to think that we could remain friends and go backwards. We can't. We, you know. It's like either move forward or so. Just- you need no. to figure your shit out. No, I would even say you're not you're not ready to be in a relationship with me. I need a man who has his shit together. I need someone who doesn't say one thing and then do another, and I need someone who's grown up and capable of being in a relationship with someone who's a single mother of 3. And I don't think you are right now. And I hope that changes, but right now, like I need to focus on my children. And I can't be playing like fuckboy games and I can't be stuck in some sort of bullshit situationship and this whole back and forth and empty promises about the future. I just don't have time for. I don't have time for hope. Right now, I need to focus on me and my children and I need to be present. I only have time for people who can back up their words with their actions. And I care about you and I'm not trying to be rude, but like, I just don't have time for this. You come and going in and out of my life is really hard on me. And quite honestly, I think it's kind of selfish. And if you figure your shit out and you can actually follow through with the things that you say, then, you know, give me a call. But until then, I just don't think we, we can't go back to what we had. Okay. I think it's pretty good advice. You have good good advice. So that was a good reality check for it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm sorry you're going through this, um, but you seem like you have a good head on your shoulders. You seem like you have a good support system and you have friends. And listen, this guy just needs to grow up a little bit. And maybe he's a swell guy and maybe he is your guy, but he is clearly... And listen, it w- I would be understandable if he's a little scared about jumping into a relationship with, you know, in, in your situation, you have a lot going yeah. on. And so and they're under the, three, so it's three under three. But yeah, <laughs> the more, you, but like, that's what I'm saying. If I were you, I want you to focus on stability. I want you to embrace things that bring stability in your life. The people who bring stability in your life, because the more stability you have in your life, the more attractive you'll be for anyone. And there is an element of instability that I think you're presenting to this friend of yours that maybe is giving him pause. And, and understandably so, right? Like, 
So yeah. I think you just need to focus on healthy rules and boundaries with your ex, with the people around you. And just if it, if it's stable, then yes. If it's not stable, if it's confusing, if it's unpredictable, remove that from your life. And then focus on healthy boundaries, healthy rules that you can enforce, hold people accountable. And if people can't follow your healthy boundaries and healthy rules, then you don't have time for them. And that includes friends, families, and potential lovers. And the more you focus on that and the more you bring that into your life, the easier it will be for you to enforce those boundaries and will, you will attract the right people. Yeah, that is, yes. I agree with that. And the sure. more you present having your shit together, if this guy really is just scared about the instability that you currently have going on, maybe that will ease his frustrations. But he still needs to grow up and step up and he needs to have stability and he still needs to back up his words with his actions. Yes, I agree. All right. And it, yeah, yeah, that's good. Because everyone else around me is like, obsessed with the concept of us being together so i feel like i can yeah never it's a get fantasy it. yeah it's, but, it's yeah, a fun like fantasy story book. and maybe it will come true but right now you need to deal with reality you have too much at stake you have too much going on and playing out a fantasy with your friends about you know something that just isn't real you don't have time for that bullshit right now you got kids to raise and you're still young yet you're a beautiful woman you have a lot going for you just get your shit together Bring stability into your and your kids' lives, and I promise you, like things will get better. I agree. Thank you. All right. Good well, little, like, yeah, reality. Right. I love that. Okay. No, that's good. Keep good us way posted. Twenty four. Yeah, keep us posted. We'd love an update okay. on the next time when you know you interact with this guy and what you actually say to him and see if you take our advice. But we absolutely wish you the best. Yeah. No. Thank you. And congratulations on your uh, three wonderful children. And you too. Thank you. Yeah. Aren't you having? Yeah, you're Soon. having a baby too. Soon. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Okay. Keep us posted. I can't wait to hear an update. Okay. Awesome. Thank All right. You. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thefilefiles.com. We'll see you again tomorrow. It's going to be wild. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.